Hey everyone, Leo is here, another Johnson Lightning episode. I have Jalen here with me to talk to me about something that we've been waiting on for a while, the R Gateway. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Leo is here, another Johnson Lightning episode, and I have here with me Jalen. How are you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. Glad to be here. Yeah, I mean, I was uh, looking forward for this episode, and I know that a lot of people have been looking forward for this amazing feature. Finally, the R Gateway is coming to life. Uh, you know, we've been talking about it for multiple years. And before we go and nerd out on all this stuff, Jed, and who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm a product manager on the uh, Azure Arc team, and I focus on our networking and identity related areas. So, Jed, you know, R Gateway. Um, you know, I've been working on Arc for, <laughs> for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, this is definitely something that uh, a lot of people are waiting for. Let's talk, uh, you know, let's talk about it. First thing first, what was the problem? You know, what is it that we're here to talk about today? For sure, for sure. Yeah, so we're here to talk about, obviously, our gateway. Uh, and the primary problem uh, that we're looking to address, we're looking to simplify the network configuration requirements to use ARC. Uh, this is a top customer ask. Uh, we hear from many customers that, hey, when I want to uh, adopt ARC and ARC-enabled scenarios, uh, I have to uh, view the URL list uh, that I need to get allowed in my enterprise proxy or firewall, and that can take a long time. So uh, essentially, uh, to give an overview of that challenge, uh, today, ARC requires several endpoints. If you want to just ARC-enable a machine, you'll need to allow 15-plus endpoints for just that basic scenario. Uh, and then if you if a customer were to adopt every single ARC enabled uh, scenario, uh, including like our Azure Stack HCI pieces, the number of URLs could that could get in the 150 plus range. Uh, and that's quite a few uh, for customers. And we know that uh, requiring several endpoints negatively impacts the ARC experience because we know that uh, from a customer perspective, uh, allowing even a single endpoint can take quite some time uh, to get through your networking teams, your security teams, and everything like that. So uh, the ARC Gateway primarily, its goal is to reduce the list of URLs uh, that customers need to open access to for ARC. Yeah. And let's uh, you know, let's talk for a second about why why is that really? And I know that you have a cool architecture diagram to show me here. I mean, at the end of the day, those ARC enabled servers, right? Um, they are basically just an implementation towards something that is much bigger than just the server itself. Like obviously the servers, all the operational aspect of bringing a server into Arc, that is the fundamental building block. But it's the extensions that are really, you know, what makes this URL list to blow out. Mm -hmm. um, and this is really what we're here to solve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, as we know, as you continue to adopt uh, more and more ARC enabled extensions and scenarios, each extension and scenario has its own set of URLs uh, yeah. that you must find. Uh, so that's today's experience. Uh, and what we're looking to with ARC Gateway is to simplify that end to end. Yeah, definitely. You know, these extensions are really the value proposition of ARC enabled uh, servers and Kubernetes for that matter. We'll talk about it a bit later. But uh, yeah, I mean, show me how it works. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, our gateway uh, primarily works by introducing two new components. Mm. Uh, first is the gateway resource itself. And this is an ARM resource. And the gateway is served on a, on a specific domain uh, and customers allow access in their proxies to that domain. Uh, and then there's a second component introduced as part of our gateway, and that's the ARC proxy. Uh, now this component lives within the ARC agent and it routes all agency traffic and extension traffic to its destination in Azure via ARC Gateway. Uh, so as mentioned, the ARC proxy itself is a core part of the ARC agent. There's no management or configuration required on behalf of the customer for the ARC proxy. It simply lives within the agent and forwards traffic on uh, to the relevant service in Azure via ARC Gateway. Yeah, so basically like any other proxy for that matter, as we, you know, throughout the years with enterprise with enterprise uh, uh, customers. Mm -hmm. Proxy sits, you know, next to the agent tree, basically, or, uh, uh, or you know, route all the agent tree traffic to the proxy and then go to the gateway outside to Azure, basically. That's kind of the flow, right? Absolutely. And that's yeah. described a bit in more detail in the diagram that we have here. So we start uh, on the left here, where we have on-prem infrastructure. Uh, mm -hmm. And the customer has their on-prem servers. Uh, and now let's look into kind of the, a single server here. 
Uh, so we know that within a single server, we have the uh, ARC connected machine agent. As mentioned previously, the ARC proxy lives within the connected machine agent. And like the uh, message says here, all ARC agentry and extensions use ARC proxy as their forward proxy. Now, from there, the ARC, the ARC proxy sends traffic uh, to the on-prem proxy, the customer's enterprise proxy. And then from there, uh, traffic routes to Azure. Now, uh, for ARC Gateway, uh, I did mention that each ARC Gateway has a unique uh, URL, a unique endpoint, and that's shown here, this mm -hmm. unique GUI. Uh, but also, there are some endpoints that will continue to uh, that customers will continue to need uh, to allow in their enterprise proxy, and some of those are the hybrid identity service, uh, Microsoft Entra, and then Azure Resource Manager. Uh, so these are are all co con uh, connected to um, by the customer's proxy directly. And then um, there are Arc enabled services and extensions here uh, on the far right that the gateway enables uh, traffic to go to. So if we were to look end to end from an extensions perspective, you start with an extension, the traffic goes via the ARC proxy, to the enterprise proxy, to the ARC gateway, to the relevant service in Azure. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's how the traffic flows. Yeah. All right. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I definitely think that, like, I definitely understand why people were looking for this for, for a long, long time, right? Because, you know, at the end of the day, in an enterprise setup, when you have so many ARC enabled servers and you have, you know, you multiply this by the number of extensions. And as we know, the number of extensions is, is pretty big, you know, um, you know, useful extensions like Microsoft Defender for Cloud, Azure Monitor, you know, Update Manager, like you have here on, on screen. When you start to multiply those, it's becoming huge. And so I definitely understand why people were looking for that. Show me the magic. I know that you have a nice demo to show me. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to start the demo, I'll actually show um, a kind of simulated customer environment that I've set up. Mm -hmm. And the core of that is this uh, enterprise proxy where I've allowed specific uh, URLs. So for our gateway, like I mentioned, there are uh, URLs required uh, that still need to be allowed in the customer uh, enterprise proxy. And one of those is the customer's unique gateway URL. Now I've already created a gateway. I already have its URL and that's this one displayed here. Uh, every customer's gateway URL of course is unique, but this is the one for the one that I, I've already configured. Yeah. And then there are still a couple other URLs required for the core onboarding scenario, uh, which is what I'll be demoing. Uh, Management.azure.com continues to be required. Login.microsoftonline.com is required for Entro. And then we have the uh, hybrid identity service uh, URLs. Uh, which is gbl.his. And then we also have the regional um, hybrid identity service URL. In my case, I'm going to be onboarding a server in the West Central region. So that's why I've allowed the West Central um, uh, HIS endpoint. And then also packages at Microsoft.com and download are still required to be allowed in the customer's proxy for onboarding. So this is the proxy that I've configured. And I show this just to illustrate that these are the only URLs that the server that I'll be showing next has access to. Now, we'll move over to the server itself. Uh, so this is a server that I've spun up. Uh, and it is within uh, the same network as the proxy that I just showed. It only has access to those URLs uh, that I uh, just mentioned. Now, a couple of things that I've also already set up uh, if we look here, I've already added um, the onboarding script uh, to my um, uh, files here. And essentially, in the onboarding script, there's a gateway parameter that uh, you can view in our documentation, uh, or it's also generated once you generate an onboarding script with the gateway resource. But in that onboarding script, uh, the, gateway's I the gateway ID is specified so that uh, once we onboard, the server knows uh, to leverage that gateway resource. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to run the uh, onboarding command. Mm -hmm. So this is a new this is a new thing, right? The fact that you have like the now the gateway parameter, this is a new addition that that now we have. So that's something yes. that the customer will have to make sure that he's got that parameter set up in the onboarding script. Um, anything other than that, or is it just a single parameter? Yeah, it's just that single parameter. 
Uh, and when, in the public preview, we will have the experience in portal so that you, once you generate the onboarding script, you simply select which gateway you're going to use. And then it will put uh, in portal, it will put that uh, required parameter in the onboarding script for you. Got it. Okay. Now we're uh, onboarding the server to Azure. And uh, while it's doing that, um, I'll show a couple details from, uh, from the kind of onboarding information that you get. Mm -hmm. So as part of this, you can see first connection type is set to gateway. Uh, this is one great indication that uh, your server during onboarding will be configured to use your gateway resource. And then second, you can see the uh, Azure Arc Proxy also mentioned uh, that the service configuration uh, has been updated uh, for the Azure Arc Proxy. This is the on-prem component, as I mentioned, that's part of that native Arc agent. Got it. Awesome. Now we see the machine has been onboarded successfully to Azure. Uh, now what I'd like to do is kind of show the uh, logs. So now what we'll do is kind of prove the gateway is being used. So we're going to run AGCM agent logs uh, to make sure that we get the correct logs and the correct files. Now to verify that we're using the gateway, what we'll do is we'll go to our files, we'll go to program data, we'll look at the logs for the Azure Connected Machine Agent, and we'll pull up the logs, and we'll look at the um, ARC proxy logs. Uh, let's make this a bit bigger. And here we go. So there are lots of logs here, uh, but essentially there are a couple pieces that I want to show. Uh, and I'll highlight those specifically. So we're going to look for an indication that our gateway resource is being used. And we can see that here in the local proxy logs. And here we can see, boom, gateway, and it's showing our gateway URL. So uh, we're essentially in the logs, you can see that, hey, um, this is the gateway being communicated with. And then uh, further down, we can see messages like um, done via gateway done via gateway. So that is an indication that our gateway resource is being leveraged to reach uh, different endpoints within Azure. Got it. So this is a great indication, right? I mean, I think that at the end of the day, right, people are looking to get this reassurance that traffic is actually going through, you know, traffic is actually going through the, to the gateway. I wanted to talk to you, this, this was a cool demo, uh, Jalen, you know, nice and clean and, you know, definitely, um, you know, we're working on more things in context of the R gateway and talking about working on more things right now, our gateway is currently in preview, correct? Mm -hmm. So what are our, what are our plans right now? What are the limitations currently with preview and what are the current supported ARC services that, uh, that the gateway is working with? Yeah, for sure. So uh, we are, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we're moving to a public preview soon with Arc Gateway. Uh, and there are three core limitations that we'll call out. First, mm -hmm. uh, leveraging Arc Gateway uh, with Express Route is currently not supported in the preview. Mm -hmm. So if you're leveraging Private Link or if you're leveraging Express Route or Site to Site VPN, uh, you will need to either use that option or you'll use Arc gateway. Uh, so currently in public preview, it, it requires uh, all of the traffic to route via public endpoints, uh, the mm -hmm. public endpoints that we've shown. So those are the primary, that's the first limitation that I'll mention. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, there's a specific type of proxy uh, or there's a specific type of proxy capability called TLS termination, where uh, when a traffic goes to a proxy, the proxy will terminate the connection, inspect the traffic, and then reinitiate a new connection. Those mm. that type of proxy uh, is not supported in our public preview either. Uh, so if you have proxies that perform that TLS termination or that uh, traffic inspection, then uh, those types of proxies aren't supported in the public preview. Uh, and then lastly, the uh, is a um, limitation that I'll mention around the gateway resource itself. You can create at most five gateway resources in a subscription. Now, you absolutely do not need more than one. One gateway resource is sufficient for all your traffic and all your ARC-related needs. But mm -hmm. uh, in case you absolutely need to, um, you can create up to five gateway resources per subscription. Um, and another note on that, one gateway resource can serve 
servers across uh, your entire team. Mm. Uh, That's so, important. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So while you can't, while you do create the gateway resource in a subscription, you uh, that that resource is not limited to servers in that uh, subscription. It can service all the servers across your tenant. Uh, so Got that's it. an important thing to call out. Got it. And what are the current services that that I can work with with Arc uh, with the Arc Gateway in terms of Azure Arc? Yeah. Uh, so with Arc Gateway, you can you can leverage services like um, extended security updates, uh, data services, uh, the connectivity scenarios like SSH. Uh, mm -hmm. ones like Microsoft Defender. Uh, and in the public preview, you'll see this in our documentation. While our goal is to cover all endpoints uh, required, there still will be some in our public preview that customers will need to allow. For instance, if you're leveraging Azure Monitor, the majority of endpoints are covered by our gateway, but you will still need to uh, allow, for instance, your log analytics workspace. Uh, mm -hmm. which does have uh, a, its yeah. own endpoint, you'll still need to allow that one in your proxy during the public preview. Um, so it. that's uh, one thing that I'll call out. But those are a couple of the services that you'll be able to leverage. Mm -hmm. Got it. I love it. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, like any preview product, we'll continue to add features. We'll continue to make it better. We'll continue to, yeah. you know, listen to our customers and making sure that, you know, we're adding and prioritizing the right things. I want to say thank you, Jalen, for uh, for joining me today. That was awesome. Obviously, a feature that a lot of people will be waiting for, the R Gateway. It's coming to life, and I'm super excited about that. Jalen, thank you so much for uh, for being a guest on the show and for the Jumps of Lightning uh, viewers. Thank you so much for continuing watching and supporting us, and we're going to see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.